Okay, so let's continue on with part two of analyzing categorical data. And we'll start back on page 17. It says relationships between two categorical variables. In the middle there's a definition there. Conditional relative frequency, okay? Conditional relative frequency gives the percent or proportion of individuals that have a specific value for one categorical variable among individuals who share the same value of another categorical variable. In other words, given that I had survived, I can make a conditional relative frequency table here, right? So given that I had survived, I can say that my relative frequency for first, second, and third would look like what? 197 over 442, 94 over 442, 151 over 442. It would sort of look something like this. Okay? So let's go to the example. Example, blah, 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 okay, we have the same thing that we had before, okay. A, what proportion of survivors were third class passengers? What proportion of third class were survivors would be, given that you have survived, what percent are third, third class? So that would be this guy right here, right? Whatever that means, whatever that would be, that would be your answer. B, what percent of first class passengers survived? Okay, what percent of third what percent of first class passengers survived? So given you are first class, what percent survived? So given that you are first class, what percent survived? So you'll be 197 divided by 319. Okay? So that's a conditional relative frequency. Okay, conditional relative frequency. Okay. So let's say that I am going to make a bar chart out of this. Okay, so that would be on page 19. Page 19, there is a side-by-side -side bar graph, and there is a segmented bar graph. So let's look at, let's go back and look at the example that they have here in the book. In the book, they would go back to the snowmobile stuff that we talked about last lecture. And it says, it gives you a side-by-side -side bar graph and a segmented bar graph there. Okay? And these are all in relative frequencies, right? They are in percents. Okay, so if you add them together, if you added the three bars on the left-handed side-by-side bar graph, if you added the blue, red, and green, it would be 100%. It would have to be 100%, right? If you added the group on the right-hand side of A, the side-by-side -side bar graph, again, it would be 100%. And it shows you there on the segmented bar graph. They actually took those bar graphs and they added them together and they stacked them one on top of each other, right? One on top of each other, and it goes like that. And it looks, if you see, the, and it, they both add to 100%. Okay? All right. Now, so what are we to surmise or conclude when we look at the segmented bar graphs. If you look at the segmented bar graphs, what it tells you is this. Me knowing whether or not you are environmental club membership, if you have one or not, gives me a bit of information. It tells me that if you are an environmental club, club member, you are more likely to have never been on a snowmobile because you're up to that's up to like that blue on the right hand side is about 70%. Okay, which makes sense. Okay. And you the percentage of you owning a snowmobile, if you are an environmental group member, is very, very small. You can see that little sliver of green on top of the right hand there, right? Okay. So in other words, 
there is a relationship or, or there is an association with you being an environmental club and you owning a snowmobile or you have you never being on a snowmobile there is an association with that right because if there were no association what would have happened if there's no association it means that what it doesn't really matter whether you an environmental club member or not the results are the same in other words if i do made a segmented bar graph between being an environmental club and not being an environmental club, they would look exactly the same or something very similar, okay? If there is something very similar, that means that it doesn't really matter whether you're an environmental club member or not. Therefore, there is no association between being an environmental club member and owning the snowmobile. But in this case, obviously, there's a difference in the segmented bar graph. So yes, you would say there is an association between those two categorical variables. Okay? So I'll go down to the bottom. If you look at it, it says the association. There is an association between the two variables if knowing the value of one variable helps us predict the value of the other. In other words, if I knew you were an environmental club member, I know you have a very small proportion of owning the snowmobile, okay? If knowing the value of one variable does not help us predict the value of the other, then there is no association, okay? And the segmented bar graphs would look pretty similar, okay? If you look at the page on page 20, it shows you that. If it shows you that if there were no association, to the both of the segment and bar graphs that you see there looks pretty sim similar and looks almost the same, okay? So in that case, there would be no association. All right, so that's that. Let's go to the example. Let's go back, revisit the Titanic disaster again and see what they have us do in this example. A, find the distribution of survival status for each class of travel. So each class of travel to survive would be what? So the first class would be 197 over 319. Second class would have been 94 survived given that you were in second class. Third class would have been 151, 627. And if you do these, you get 61.8% and where am I at? Second class, this is 36% survival rate. And this here was 24.1% survival rate. In other words, if you were first class, you had a much better chance of surviving, 61.8% versus third class, where it was only 24.1%. Okay? And you can draw the segmented bar graph. I'm not going to do that. It looks like what it does on page 21. And B, describe what the graph in part A reveals about the association between the travel. Okay? So, does the fact whether or not you're first, second, or third class travel effect or have an association with your survival rate? Well, yes, right? I know that you have a much better survival rate if you're first class versus third class, okay? So yes, there is an association. There is an actually an adverse, there's a bad association there, right? So the first class had the highest percentage rate of survival rate followed by second class and then third class. Okay, because it does help us predict your survival rate. Okay? And that's it. We are done with the second part.